Christ Community Church, located at 25th and Thomas Avenue in Portsmouth, Ohio. Hi, I'm Robbie Burke, and uh, most of you know me. I've been attending Christ Community Church for about 48 years now, so I'm kind of one of the fixtures here, one of the old people. And I uh, wanted to tell you about our wonderful trip to Uganda. Uh, we, I, I went to Uganda with four other people, and we were there the latter part of January 2023. And um, it was just a, it was an awesome experience. The people in Uganda... Are, are lovely people. And we, we attended church there, and it, was, it kind of reminded me of my little church growing up in West Virginia, a little Mud River Church where everybody welcomes you, and uh, they're happy to see you, and, and everybody looks, so who's, who are the white people there and stuff? You know, who are those people? And, but friendly come up and just love on you, and, and it was an awesome experience. Um, we, by, by the grace of God, we attended one of the uh, the Hope for Orphans, and it was about two hours away from Uganda. And I was saying, oh, do we really want to go, you know, because it's a long, bumpy ride and stuff. And I, the Holy Spirit said, hey, let's go. That was such an awesome experience. The uh, orphanage is called Hope for Orphans, run by Nigam Jenny Teddy. We called her Teddy. And um, Teddy started out with about 15 about 30 children. She now has 62. They range in age from four, from four years old to about uh, 13, 14. These were lovely children. They were all over us. We just, we had the best time with these children. Singing, I was talking, teaching them ABCs. We were going through counting and I had them to count. I said, count all the way up to 80. And then when they stopped, I said, that's how old I am. So uh, they were just lovely. Um, I asked Teddy, I said, Teddy, how come you started this orphanage? And she said, when I was very young, my mother died, and I went from house to house. I was taken from place to place, and I promised God I would do this for little children. That really touched my heart. I thought that was so beautiful, the fact that she wanted to help these children. She was so studious. When we would talk, when Justin, Justin, uh, would talk about things that they could do to help to be self-sustaining. Uh, she was taking notes all, all the time. She was totally listening, really focused how that she can make her orphanage improve. Because they said, well, maybe chickens. She said they tried chickens. They had some chickens, and they had to eat the chickens. They were hungry. So she really struggles for food. She works on a shoestring budget. They cook over an open fire with little bricks, and um, she manages well. They, she goes home at night so she can use the internet to raise funds. And um, they have three, what they call mothers, who stay there with the children overnight and two older gentlemen who stay there with the children overnight. These children were so sweet. Um, I was fascinated by Sister Barbara's uh, industry she has created these charcoal blocks that they make. And Justin, of course, had to get his hands in the dirt. And uh, so you mix up sort of a muddy mixture of, of charcoal and some other stuff. And then you, you press it into this machine. I took some pictures of this machine. You press these charcoal briquettes that they're making. Uh, and then they harden. And so she sells them. She uses some for the... Uh, the orphanage for heating, for for cooking, and I thought that was was very industrious. Sister Barbara was just as sweet as she could be. Everyone we met, and I'm telling you, Patrick and Eddie are rock stars. Those those two boys, I am so proud of them. They they came to the United States and then they went back to their country. They're working so hard to. They built their church. It is awesome. It's huge. It's awesome. I sneaked inside and I, I wanted to sing a little bit. I, I sang to see uh, the acoustics are wonderful. And uh, um, Florence, that is my dear sweet friend, Patrick's wife, Florence, is just a jewel. She's the nicest person you could ever meet. And that, that was one of the highlights of my trip. We just hung together. We were pals uh, everywhere. And that just uh, it made made it so beautiful. 
And um, it's a beautiful country. Reminds me of West Virginia with the little hills, lovely uh, fields, people ride around on their bada bottas. Uh, uh, Eddie told us the story of the bada bottas. It's you can go from border to border on one tank of gas. And so they've shortened it instead of border to border. It's a bada bada. And those, those vehicles dart around everywhere, around the bus or in front of you, and you worry that you're going to hit somebody. They just go up on the sidewalk. They're everywhere. You'll see a bada bada riding along with a 10, 20-pound big bunch of bananas on their back or a bunch of pineapples. And uh, that's another thing. The fruit in the country was, oh, the pineapple was awesome. It's just exceptional. Um, and it, it was special being with Kelly and um, Sylvia. They just be, We became special friends. I loved that. Uh, Russell and Justin, father and son, it was just a pleasure to be around everyone. Um, I came from Florida. I'm a snowbird, so I flew up. Uh, and I met them actually in Brussels. I flew up to uh, Washington, D.C., and then I caught a flight to Brussels. And, and I happened to be on the same flight as, as they were uh, in getting to Brussels. So, Is she done? She did a good job of capitalizing on the, uh, uh, putting together that trip because what we do ordinarily is we fly into Entebbe, and Entebbe is a kind of a famous place because that's where the Israelis years ago were captured there, a hundred and some of them, and then they, under Idi Amin, and then they had to get them out and made a movie about it. And uh, then we go to the hotel, and we stay, the hotels we're staying in now are related to the Marriott chain, and so the food is good and, and it's safe. We don't have to worry about that. Then we end up going out to the place, and, and what you're seeing here uh, are the pictures that different ones have taken, and we don't have time to go into all of it, but uh, the, the, the schools that at, the, at Destiny, uh, the, uh, Destiny is where we put the baby rescue thing that's shut down now. And uh, then we go to Good Samaritan, where Patrick and Eddie grew up. The school there were about 2,500 kids. We go to the Bible school, and then we take a little sachet, take two days off, go over for a, a poor man's uh, uh, safari. And so you'll see all of that here. The clothes that that we're wearing today, those those. Uh, m most of it we got uh, from Patrick's wife's little shop there, and and uh, uh, Alice Kay's, you stand up, and Becky, you stand up, and Kim, you stand up, and because the, the, all of these, and who anybody else got that? Oh, uh, Sean, you, he's ugly, but we'll have him stand up, and. All of these clothes that are African style, we got, I, I think it's safe to say we got there. I think Kim blew more of her bucks than anybody on, on the clothes. And uh, uh, so that, that's why we're wearing them today. And she has a, a little shop alongside a major highway, but it's not located well. And so we're gonna to try to move it into town. Patrick's working on that now. It'll cost us a little extra money, but what they do is the, the preacher's wives set up little shops of different kinds to assist their husband so they can continue with the work of the ministry. And uh, that's why they do that. In fact, at the, at the Bible school, where with preacher training school, the first building that was done was a vocational school and they just graduated the week before we got there, 20 girls, preacher wife types, uh, in, uh, training them to be seamstresses so they could assist their husbands in making a living there for them. I, uh, Sean, you head on up this way. Uh, you can kind of follow along in the back of your bulletin as who's doing what, when, and where. Is, is Kelly here? I, I, did, I didn't see her. Okay, all right. Russell Johnson cannot be here because his son is being ordained today and will be preaching at a church up toward Columbus. 
and he, because he's getting ready to go to the mission field, and then Ru Russell made a little thing like Robbie did, but the voice didn't come through, so uh, we got to scratch him, and uh, that's the way they treat preachers anyway. So, but Sean, this is his first trip, and uh, uh, let him see, tell us about it. Now, and and I don't want to have to fuss at you again either. Okay, get out of the way. Okay. If you guys don't know me, I'm Sean. You usually have to come through the door to see me. Um, when I was uh, brought to my attention about going on this trip, I was super excited. I'm not going to lie, I wanted to go see Patrick and his beautiful wife, and also Eddie. Me and Patrick, we have a special bond together. We became really good friends through weightlifting, and I taught the boy how to swim. <coughs> So it was nice to go over and see him. But what I learned over there is that's a whole different kind of country. It's a whole different place than what we have here. The little kids running around just warms your heart to no end. There was a little kid named Jerry. He's not so little now. Yeah. He's not so little, he's probably about this tall. When we went to one of the orphanages or schools, Destiny. Mm -hmm. His feet were sticking out of his shoes about this far, and he was comfortable with those. But something that morning, we always had to take a backpack. Everywhere you went, you had a backpack with water in it and extra clothes in case it rained. But something that day told me to take two pairs of shoes. And so when Scott gave his presents to Jerry, I was worried about his feet. Well, it just so happened my shoes fit him. They were a little big, but they fit him and they, he took them in stride. There was, a, I thought there was a picture of him up here, but he had a smile from ear to ear. It just warms your heart. To know what it takes to raise a kid over there is very cheap, $45 a month. We'll buy them food, clothes, and send them to school. My wife and I, we also help support one of the kids over there. That it's a, it's a nephew of Patrick's, and we also try to help with the niece. Um, we usually send them money for Christmas and stuff like that so they can buy clothes. But other than that, I couldn't have went with a better group of people. I know this is probably Scott and Alice Kay's last trip, and it was a real joy to be with them, Norm and Becky and Kim. Um, you just if you ever get a chance to go you should go I didn't have the funding to go but there was two people from this church that want to remain anonymous that paid for my trip and it's people like them and this church is the reason why I come and make things possible for over there that church over there is going to be outstanding it's huge it's bigger than this room altogether and it's just there's so many great things going on over there. So other than that, I don't know what else to say. Then quit. I have to give it back to Scott, it, unless you want to listen to Norm. You no, ready for Norm? No, it's not Norm. No. It's Kim's turn. She's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This young lady and her husband, she works at KDMC over there just where they check if you can sleep or whatever they call it and Dan is a pharmacist down at Smith's Pharmacy and uh, Alice Kay and I visited their home the other day it is something special they're, they're in Kentucky of course and up on top of a, of a mountain and and uh, you feel like you're getting pretty close to heaven when you're up there and 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 she says she can cook but they didn't cook anything while we were there but we'll we want to go back and get dibs on that. But uh, they, they, they got together and were the ones who sponsored and paid for the water well that's there. And she'll talk about that. And how and you, before we're done here, you'll see how important that is. So it's all yours, Kimberly. Okay, my adventure to Uganda began one Saturday evening when my husband and I stopped in for service and they were doing the uh, fundraising for the well. And we kind of just looked at each other and said, this is something that we can do as for an outreach ministry. And we decided, 
very quickly afterwards to do that. But the seed was also planted that night for me to go over and I wanted to see that well. I wanted to see the water come out of the well. So how and when I would go, God would provide. As we met and began a relationship with Patrick and Eddie, their unwavering faith and obedience to God was unbelievable. I find their journey here to Portsmouth, Ohio and KCU just a very powerful testimony. I thought when the opportunity would come that I could go, I would jump in 100% and be ready to go. But as the time came, doubt crept in my mind. And with a lot of people's prayers and uh, motivation uh, and kind of pushed me along, I jumped on the plane and went. It was an experience that definitely took my faith to a higher level. I asked for it and God provided a way and I went. The water flowing from the well was an answer to one of my prayers that I had prayed to be able to go see for myself. And to see and talk to the people that it will benefit just made it all become a reality. As we traveled with Uncle Alex to Good Samaritan Schools, the Orphanage Destiny, Sister Barbara's, I witnessed the love of God these people have for their children and the community. Not only supplying their physical needs, but their spiritual needs and a path to Jesus. I understand the concept now for CCC Uganda, the water, a building, and the transformation of the area. CCC Uganda will provide a high school in the future to benefit the area where Patrick and Eddie and Florence will live. I met Florence, Patrick's wife. She is a seamstress, as Scott has said. And I met Stella, the young lady that Alice Kay continues to mentor to this day. We met Esther at our hotel, who also attended Good Samaritan High School. And she helped us with a surprise birthday party for Eddie. And I'm thankful for the friendship that I was strengthened with Alice Kay and Scott and my new friends, Becky and Norm and Sean and Kelly. And I look forward to growing those friendships also. And I met two special friends in Uganda, Francis, who graduated from Good Samaritan High School. And he is a teaching pastor at the Bible College and the villages around Kampala. He will do great things. And when I go back the next time, I promised to bring Francis all the books that he would be on his list. And Hassan. Hassan was our driver for the week. And uh, Cyrus will talk a little bit more about him. He accepted Christ while we were there. And that brought the whole trip into perspective for me. It was a, we went to church where Uncle Alex goes and Patrick and Eddie attends and it was an unbelievable service. The purpose of CCC Uganda is to spread the word of God through prayer, biblical truth, sow and water seeds, witness and be obedient to the word of God, and to see souls saved. And when I got back and reflected on my trip, which took two or three weeks, <laughs> I can look back and say that it is well with my soul. Thanks, Kim. Um, one of the things that, um, just to give you an idea, because he's talking about that building, you would think it was the Taj Mahal. Actually, uh, you guys paid for it, and you know you don't have enough money to build a Taj Mahal. The building that they have constructed, that they're ready to move into, they need they they need uh, they use white plastic chairs. They're about six dollars a piece, and so that's why this thing here is up here. We're going to start putting coins in it to pay for their for their six hundred chairs, and um, so they can start their services. They've already ordered them, anticipating the fact that we'd cough up and take care of it. Patrick and Eddie uh, are probably listening. I don't know why they are or not. But they're pictures. We had a hard time with it last night. The internet was going in and out, 
it's uh, behaving like a Democrat, and so we were having difficulties on it a little bit. I need to tell you that, uh, uh, Norm, why don't you and Becky come on up here. The, the size of the building was about the same size as that one first building we had over here. That was 100 by 60, 6,000 square feet. And then they put about 15 foot in addition to that on the back for offices, a little place for coffee and donuts and blah, 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 blah. And then in the back of it, they had already dug the uh, foundations for what was going to be the Sunday school building that will also be used for the school building. And uh, so we just, and it's during the rainy season, and if they don't hurry up and get some rebar and concrete in there, those are all going to fall in and they're going to have to do it again. So we sent them another $25,000 so they could start pouring the, the, the foundation for, for that building that will be there to follow. Uh, I haven't really heard it back from them. We'll, we'll try that in just a minute, but update you on that. But now, Nor this is Norman Becky's second trip to Uganda, uh, and they can explain that better than I can, so. Good morning. You know, when you're last, there's some advantages to it. Everybody said what you wanted to say, but it is our second trip. And um, it almost wasn't. And I say that because life's all about choices. And because of Scott and Al's case choice to go back after they didn't make it the first time, that choice changed everything. Because I wasn't going to go the second time. But when they decided to go, then it opened up the door for us to go again. Six years ago, we went, and I never thought we'd go back again, but it made a big impact on us, as you've heard all the other ones say. So when Scott made the choice, choice him and Alice Kay, we decided to go, and that choice did impact us, as I said, because it opened up the door, because without that choice, we would never got to be friends, develop a friendship with Kim and Sean. See, before I go through the door of the church and I'd shake hands with Sean, now when I walk through the door, I'm a friend of Sean's. We have a story, we have something in common. I would have never known Kim if I never chose to went. I would have never got to meet uh, Patrick's wife, Florence, who made my dress, which took two hours, <laughs> which would take me a lot longer. Uh, what I'm saying is a person's choices not only just affects them, it affects other people. It affects your family, your friends, your neighbors. It affects the next generation to come. One, two people made a choice Scott and Alice K to go back. Their choice, we reap from it. I'm so glad that they chose to go back so we could go back. If you get the opportunity to go, make sure you go. The choice will be worth it. Because if I remember right, my Lord and Savior made a choice. His choice had benefited all of us. But you must choose to go. You must choose to accept it. I wouldn't go with anybody. My husband is like my best friend, Norm is. Now, what he's going to say is going to be different than completely what I've said because the experience, uh, mine's different than his. When I look back in my rearview mirror, and we all got one of our car, I like to look and see how my Lord and Savior is working but I gotta look back, and I can't look back if I've never been there. So if you get the opportunity to go, obedience will help grow your faith and help you see who Christ truly is. Thank you. Well, uh, when, when we decided to go back in 2017, I was excited to get to go. Uh, I'd been going to church here for several years, and we'd did the uh, well fundraisers 
So uh, the wells made a big impact on, on what you see when you go there because the, the wells that we'd put down uh, out in the villages uh, where they, have, they don't have good clean drinking water, the wells that had been drilled and water was coming out uh, starts the growth of a village and typically uh, since it's church sponsored, they'll have a they'll have a church, like uh, Sister Barbara's uh, operation. She started out with a school and a church, and now there's other houses building around it. But the foundation of the village is the well, and that brings the people in out of the out of the woods to the to the well, and then they get ministered to. So uh, it just, it just it builds into a, a Christian community and uh, it gives the opportunity for, for everybody to, to witness and, and uh, share Christ with uh, all of the local people, which it's a, it's a Muslim, pretty much a Muslim country. Everywhere you go, you see little mosques built. There'll be grass huts and then there'll be a real nice, pretty mosque. So uh, Christianity's getting a good uh, foothold over there and and it it starts with the wells but it's quite a it's quite a trip if you ever get the chance to go uh, don't pass it up okay okay thanks Norm. thank you becky yeah just to um let you understand the the uh, hey guys Patrick and Eddie are, are now tuned in on us, and uh, can you hear me okay? No? Do I have to use this? Can you hear Patrick? A little bit. Okay. We're having some transmission things last night, and uh, so that way we didn't have to put up with them very long. But uh, the, the there's two or three things that you need to know. The... Uh, the sister Barbara that has been mentioned, she's the one that if you go, she's a little bitty lady, probably in her 50s, maybe she's 60, I don't know. But her, she's in declining health. And when I was there back years ago, she had lived in a, literally, this is hard to imagine, but it's not an exaggeration. She lived in a little, uh, I would call it just a, a, a closet. It's four by eight, four by eight closet. She lived in that thing and had two kids living with her. And she told me, we were walking together and, and she said, uh, Brother Scott, I've really been faithful to my Lord. I've never cheated on him. I've, done, I've given my very life and he's gonna give me a house. Uh, yeah, right. Well, what happened when we went back this year, we saw her house. She does have a house. And you would be thrilled to know that much of what it cost to build that little home that she has, it's beautiful really, was paid for uh, by Mark Hunter here in town. And, uh, and if it, it, Mark's not in the insurance business anymore, but if you see him, be sure and thank him because she thinks that she's already got one foot in heaven. And, uh, but I, that was one of the little miracles that we actually saw. I, I was skeptical at the time. She said, God's going to give me a house. Okay, yeah, he's going to give me a mansion too, but I may have to wait on him. But I, I could go on for, for, for a good bit. Now, you'll see Patrick and Eddie going in and out, and, and they can't help. That's the Internet problem that we have, and there's nothing they can do about that. Um, uh, before... Cyrus comes up and finishes this off here. Um, Eddie, you can hear me yes, okay? Sir. Okay. Can, what, how are we doing on our church building and the chairs and so on and so forth? Uh, first of all, greetings to you all. Good morning. Uh, that we bought chairs and we sent pictures. Yeah, and I Thank have you them. very yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, the only thing remaining with the building is the floor. We'll just put tiles in the near future, and then we'll be, we'll be good to go. 
And other than that, we are starting to build the uh, Sunday school building that also act as our high school building for the start until we can uh, build buildings for the high school. And it's all, all because of you guys, because of the support. Thank you very much. May God richly reward you for it. Thank you. Uh, hey, hey, Patrick, yeah. um, have you had the opportunity to go into town and see if you, we can get your little wife's little shop relocated? He, he doesn't uh, hear me. Patrick is out right now. Yeah, he's frozen. He's he's yeah, gone. He yeah. Just, uh, All righty. Yeah. But tell him as soon yeah. as he gets back from the bathroom, I want to talk to him. <laughs> okay. okay. Anybody have any questions for Patrick and Eddie? No? While we were there on the 30th of April, Eddie had a birthday party. And, uh, and, and I don't have that he's gone now. But, uh, oh, no, this is the birthday party. Is up here. The, yeah, that's the birthday party and the birthday cake there at the hotel. And, uh, and the, the people who run the hotel and the food service and everything came down to the party and brought the cake. And then they did something we'd never seen before. They took icing off of the cake and painted Eddie's face with it. I, I don't know wh where that came from or whatever. I'm not certain he was ready for that either, but it actually improved his looks. And that, so it was a, a really... <laughs> you want to talk about that a little, Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> had, had you seen that before, the painting of the face? For your birthday party, you remember when they put the icing on your face? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, I remember that. I was, I didn't know how to uh, respond to it, but I think it was <laughs> fun, and I wish. <laughs> and I would like to say we should uh, organize more trips during that time of the year. <laughs> it was. I he, could get he, used to it. Eddie did not <laughs> expect that to happen, and, and it just all of a sudden yeah, this no, girl started painting right. him up, and he looked like Chief Hoopenholler when they got through with him. And it, that it. Patrick, you have are you hearing me yet? I think he's still frozen. Now his eyes are bad. And can you hear me, Patrick? Mm, not very well. My okay. network is still very poor. Okay. All right. Anything you want to share with us before we bring Cyrus up to close the service? Oh, just I think almost everything has been said by Eddie. Uh, just to say thank you so much uh, for thinking about us and praying for us. Uh, it's really a big opportunity for the community where the church is being constructed, that uh, people are going to know about Jesus, plus the entire transformation that is going to come through that church. The local church is going to become a hub of Christ, education, clean water, health, and everything. So we are very, very grateful for everything that you are supporting. Uh, may God richly bless you. Uh, and for the question about my wife uh, shifting, I'm still raising money to go in that town area. It's uh, a bit expensive. I've not gone there yet. The reason I was asking, Patrick, is some people here have, have volunteered uh, to help finance her moving. So you need to let, let, let us know what it costs and what you want to do because we've had people volunteer and say, hey, we'll help you because we want her to make a lot of money so they can take care of us when we come over. You take care of me too. <laughs> yeah, I take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Hey. Uh, any, anybody have a question? Now speak now or forever hold your peace. You're perfectly welcome to ask. Okay. Well, 
Well, thank you guys for, for taking the time and popping up and, and uh, sharing with us a little bit. We're going to turn the service now over to Cyrus. And uh, then Alice Kay and I are getting ready to go to Cincinnati for a graduation service down there. So as soon as Cyrus starts talking, we're going to leave. And uh, and because I heard him last night. And uh, but anyway, thank you all. God bless you. What time is it there? Um, it is it is 36 minutes past 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay, so you can see it's yeah. it's about seven or eight hours difference in in the here. So when oh, they yeah. were on here last night, it was one or two o'clock in the morning. So uh, that so at, yeah. at, but thank you guys and God bless you. Thank you too. Thank you very much. God bless you too. Thank you, Brother Cyrus. Thank you. Well, hello, brothers and sisters from Christ Community Church. It's a joy being back with you all, and I have enjoyed our fellowship yesterday and um, thrilled for what God is doing in this local community of believers. If somebody was to ask me, Cyrus, what do you think Christ Community Church is trying to do? Is this just something that is nice to do, and then we feel good about it? I want to say the following. I stand before you as an expensive investment of collective hands under the shepherdship, under the leadership of a local church that has taken the great commission of Jesus Christ seriously enough not just to discuss it, to debate it, to display it on our social media, put it on our t-shirts, put it as a bumper sticker to our cars, but to demonstrate it. You see, it was a Jewish leader who came to Jesus by the name of Nicodemus at night. And here's what Jesus told him in John, 16, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He is talking to the guy who was part of the people group that Jesus himself identifies as these are my people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if these disciples didn't take it seriously enough, the gospel of Jesus Christ wouldn't even get to us. There are nearly one billion people on the planet whose primary language is French. I am originally from a former French colony. If they were to hear that John 3.16, what would it sound to them? Jean chapitre 3, verset 16, Car Dieu a tant aimé le monde qu'il a donné son Fils unique afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse point, mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. And in my native language, Sango, one of the 50 languages spoken in the country where I'm originally from, John 3.16, Petin Zapa andoye se se so tonga so, lo mou melenge ti l'ongenge lako si je so amana ben alo, aling bikui pepe, melo eke na fini ti lako lakwe. Brothers and sisters, I didn't just want to recite John 3.16 to impress you with my language skills. I want you to know the burden that is upon us. The edict from Jesus himself before he ascended to heaven. In Matthew 28.18, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commended you, and behold, I'm with you always to the ends of the age. Those are the injunctions from Jesus. Teach them to observe all that I have commended. And then he said in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is to come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. The pastoral leadership of this church didn't just come up with something nice to have Christ Community Church Uganda. It is to obey the edict of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to make Christ known to the ends of the age. While we have the opportunity to make Christ known here in Portsmouth, you're doing it locally. But we have to do this simultaneously because there are some Christ followers who will tell you, well, we just have a lot of poor people and problems here at home too. We are not to do it sequentially, meaning once Ohio, once the U.S. is saved, then we can think about the world. I got here because the local church said, Lord, while we're doing what we're doing here in Ohio, we will pour into these young people like what you saw in the story of Eddie and Patrick. I am grateful because a local church, a local pastor has contacted Malone University has made known to them the need of a student from Africa 
I didn't get here because of my brain and my own resources. And when I attended Malone, it was because of a local pastor by the name of Pastor Stevens, whose daughter was attending Malone in Canton, Ohio. That's how I went to that school. And while I was at that school, I needed a place to stay. And a firefighter by the name of Marty Stockdale, she turned 70 today. That's why my wife Julie is not with me. She is in northern, in northern Canton because Marty Stockdale, a firefighter, saw a bulletin in the local church, the first Mennonite church in Canton, that says there is an international student from Africa that needs a place to stay. Marty housed me for four years, brothers and sisters. Did not charge me a penny. Loved on me. And at graduation, she came and gave me a hug. I said, Marty, I'll never be able to repay you for what you've done. That's what you did for Eddie and Patrick. They were adopted. They were loved. They were taught. They were educated. They were ordained. And they were sent to their countries. I have benefited from that. That's why I'm willing to drive 400 miles from Lynchburg, Virginia, to come here to affirm, to be the spiritual cheerleaders to all of you, brothers and sisters, that this is a big deal. We owe it to Jesus to make him known to the ends of the age. Most people want to focus on only on our family. But if that were the case, the gospel would not have gotten to us at a cost. When I spoke multiple times from this pulpit, it is because this church was already passionate about making Christ known. You have brought the children of the world choir to introduce the community of faith from this, this town to these precious children. Many of you are sponsors to this day, including Pastor Scott, who is sponsoring little Jerry in Uganda. Giving him education so that he will have the social mobility to support himself. The local church is the gospel center that is going to pour into these young people in that community in Kakiri. Education will give them the social mobility. So there will be the godly fathers and godly mothers to support their own family. I am just trying to let you know, why are you collecting these funds? Why are you sending people to go see these things? I do not want people to go on a trip and just come home and say, praise the Lord, I just come home alive. I want people to go on these trips and come home gloriously messed up. And say, God, I did not fill up an application to be born in the United States. It is only but by your grace that I was born here. And I want to live in such a way, at the end of your life, let it be said of you. Like that old hymn said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Can that be said of this church? I say resounding yes when I look at Eddie. But isn't that interesting? When Pastor Scott, Alice, and the group from this church have gone to Uganda, they begin thinking about the future. They talk to Alex. Can we find a few people we can pour into so that there is continuity of the gospel in that country? That's the reason why a water well is drilled. And you know when I was growing up in Africa, I hated dry season because I had to carry water. I'm the oldest of 12 children. The average family in sub-Saharan Africa uses one gallon of water per day. That's like one flush of a toilet out of our bathroom. So that water well, Kim, it's a big deal. To families to come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the living water, and have access to a water because the people from a local church say, Lord, not on our watch will these kids go scrape dirty water to drink. So now, a former Muslim by the name of Hassan has witnessed everything that this church has been doing and sitting under the preaching of Scott in Kampala, Uganda, made the decision to surrender his life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And isn't that interesting, brothers and sisters? The two pastors you ordained from this church, they're the one that had the privilege of baptizing Hassan Mutebi in the Victoria Lake. They ask him, Hassan, do you surrender your, Lord, your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? He said, yes. They said, upon your confession of our Lord and Savior, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. That was done by those two young men. You loved from this church and you sent back home. That's a big deal. And I want to conclude with the following statement. I stand before you recognizing that if we do not take this gospel seriously, how in the world are these people going to give their life to Jesus Christ? If we're all focused on our own safety alone. My decision has been made. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. I can bury a child. Jesus is worthy. No turning back. And Jesus who gave this injunction of Matthew 28, Acts 1, 8, Paul said this in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Therefore God the Father has also highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above all names. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Christ's community exists to make Christ known to the ends of the age and to the ends of the earth. So when I look at Eddie, when I look at Patrick, and their wives, I said, Lord, thank you for this church. And I hope I set you ablaze to walk out of the worship service today. And remember, this is not just about doing good for the sake of doing good. We want to bring glory to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is my prayer for all of you. Thank you for continuing to make this a lifestyle. This is the DNA of this local church. The banner over this church is not just to make Jesus Christ known here in Portsmouth. We will make Christ known everywhere we have the ability. That is what is at stake. Pray for Eddie. Pray for Patrick. But also pray for ourselves. Lord Jesus, if I get hit by a bus, let it be said of you. I gave my life to you and I want to make you to the ends of the age. That's my beautiful reminder of the love of the people from this community of faith right here. Yes, Scott and Alice are dear friends, his, his son, and all of you here. But I am not naive into believing that the biblical data, the biblical corpus in our hands is to make Christ known to the ends of the age. Matt? Hard to follow that up. Um, it is, we were, my wife and I were talking about this morning, you know, yesterday, uh, my wife and I went and had our birthday celebration, a belated birthday celebration, because, you know, she was busy all week, so we went out to breakfast, and we, she's into golf, and so we bought her a new putter, and, and then she went and, and, and spent all of our savings on flowers and plants, um, I won't have anything to eat today, but it looks really pretty out back. Um, and so we did all that, and she woke up this morning, and she just didn't feel good, and, and she didn't feel right. And I said, is it any wonder that you're getting ready to teach? She, she will teach a bunch of women, disciple a bunch of women this afternoon, this evening. And I said, you know, as much as I have talked about with Eddie and Patrick, that they are surrounded by Islam, they are surrounded by all kinds of issues and problems and, 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 and difficulties that they'll have to overcome. Like, for example, <laughs> I thought it was funny they, they, that Hassan wanted to be, and, and that was a, was a big deal. Hassan is a very influential person. And as, when they baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus, he wanted to be baptized in Lake Victoria, which is known primarily around the world for having the most crocodile attacks of any place in the world. I thought, well, there's faith. Because, you know, I need somebody to help me down these steps over here in the chlorinated water. Um, but it, the biggest thing that you need to pray for for Eddie and Patrick is because of the success that they're having, because of their hard work and their dedication to Scripture, is Satan will come after them. Satan came after my wife this morning because she's going to be discipling women tonight. Satan's going to come after them. Be praying. Be praying and praying and praying. Yes, we're going to raise money. We're going to continue to raise money. We're going to continue to expand their efforts. We want Eddie and Patrick, for all you guys have poured into them, we want them to be God's instrument to baptize hundreds, thousands of people into Jesus Christ. But it won't be easy. It's never easy. Be praying for them. Satan comes to kill and destroy, and he will come after them. Just as he's come after us, just as he's come after my wife, he will come after Eddie and Patrick. Anybody who is dedicated to the gospel, Satan will come after. And you do the same thing. I've told Eddie and Patrick this. I hope they remember it. I will remind them, and you do the same thing. What did Jesus do when Satan came after him? You quote scripture right back at him. That's what you do. Let's pray for them, and let's pray for us, 
and let's go brave the monsoon to beat the Baptist to lunch, all right? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Eddie and Patrick. You've risen them up. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill them. You will give them courage. You will be with them. You will keep Satan away from them. And that through you, you will, through them, you will be honored and glorified with many, many people coming to Christ. And that those people will bring others to Christ. And I pray for this church that it will continue its efforts to evangelize here and around the world through young men like Eddie and Patrick. May their tribe increase. May we do this again. May we do this all over the world, not thinking about the jewels in our crown one day, but thinking about your honor and your glory forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. All right, folks. Go grab an umbrella. Go get something to eat and be praying for Eddie and Patrick, Lord willing. I'll see you next week. Christ Community meets on Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 10.30 a.m. For more information, visit www.christcommunity.net or check out our Facebook page.